Hello, I'm Stefan Graeber, I'm project leader for Lexty, and in this video we're going to be looking at a new snap that uh, my team put together over the past few months, and that's now available uh, for public consumption, still in the early days, um, so you may still want to, to do some amount of tests and give us some feedback, um, but that snap is called Microceph, and it's a very, very easy way to set up a Ceph cluster. It effectively, as I said, uh, ships as a snap package that contains everything in one, one big blob, effectively. Um, and it comes with a small side service that makes it very easy to cluster together and distribute the Ceph services as well as set up the disks. Um, so that saves you from having to use some of the, well, first of all, manually installing the Ceph packages and then using some deployment tool to configure everything. Uh, using this, you can pretty easily set up a cluster of anywhere from like three to dozens of systems uh, and pretty easily add disks uh, to Ceph and then make sure it works and then the LexD snap can integrate with it and very, very quickly get you a functional um, deployment of Ceph uh, with serving block devices and file systems at this point. It's still a bit limited. Uh, there's not too much control about where um, some specific Ceph services land in, in the cluster. And there's also some uh, services that are not supported yet. Things like um, the object gateway, which we use uh, even within LexD to provide our storage bucket feature is not currently supported. But um, for the, the most simple cases of I, if you just want a quick Ceph cluster that you can use with LexD, it works great. Uh, and that's what we've been using um, recently for demos and something we're also uh, actively using ourselves for development because that really beats any of the other uh, deployment tools for Ceph at this point. All right. Um, so enough said about that. Let me just switch over to a terminal here. And here what I've got is three systems, demo 01, 0203. They're all the same. They're all, I uh, believe, probably Ubuntu 22.04. Yeah, 22.04 LTS. And they all came with two disks. So there's SDA, that's the main drive. And then SDB is an additional uh, disk that's present on that system. I can just kind of look around. Um, actually, it looks like in this case, uh, SDA would be the additional drive and SDB is the system drive. We can see this is 10 gigs large, that's the default for LexD, and this is 20 gigs large, and it's uh, that additional disk. Doesn't really matter uh, because Microsoft does the right amount of detection to figure out kind of what disks um, are available on the system. All right, so let's get started. Uh, first thing to do is gonna be install Microsoft on all three. So just snap install Microsoft. All right, and once that's done on the first one, let's run Microsoft in it. Uh, as to pick the IP address, we just keep using uh, the same one. You'll notice the, the workflow is very similar to what you use for LexD. Then do you want to create a new Microsoft cluster? Yeah, we do. Choose a name for the system, demo 01 is fine. And now it's just initializing Microsoft itself. Do you want to add additional servers to this cluster? Yes, we do. Um, demo 02, and that gives us a token. And now on the other one, we can do Microsoft init. Say no to creating a new cluster, enter the, enter the join token. And that's gonna join that one. And then we can enter the name of another one. So let's do demo 03 and do Microsoft init on demo 03. Copy that token, give it the token. And once that's done, we can just hit enter on the first one to see that we're done adding servers. If you had more than two uh, additional servers, you could keep on going. Uh, but in this case, I just have three. Then it asks, do I want to add any uh, local disks to Microsoft, so let's do yes. And it shows me whatever disks are available locally that are not currently uh, partitioned. So in this case, it's not saying this one, I can just copy the path. And do we want to have it wiped? In this case, yes, I do, because I have no idea if there's uh, what's on there. Uh, so just wipe it. 
and I've got nothing else to add, so just do enter and this machine is done. Then let's do the same thing with the other two. So again, pick the disk. Do you want to have it wiped? Yes. And this will defer, like in this case I'm using virtual machines. If you're using physical drives, you're gonna see the actual disk ID and manufacturer, that kind of stuff. Um, but in this case, it's just a virtual machine disk that I'm dealing with. Um, and again, wiping it and no other disk. So in this case, I've got three virtual machines, each with one external disk uh, that I'm using for Ceph. You, that's kind of your bare minimum. Uh, Ceph really needs to have at least three servers and you need at least one disk per server. Uh, you probably want to go with more than that, but this is really your bare minimum. Once that's done, let's just clear those terminals and just look at demo01. It's like a new microsef.ceph status. And we can see that Ceph is running. It's got Quorum on the monitors. Monitors are running on all three servers. The manager active one is on demo01. We've got standbys on the other two. And three OSDs, so three disks, three are up. Everything is in. Total capacity is 60 gigs. And yeah, just works. If it was D3, we'll see where the OSDs are. So Ceph is effectively, effectively functional. Um, at that point, what you want to do is get started with LexD itself. So let's do LexD init. And we'll assemble our cluster the same way we just did for Microsoft. So do you want to set clustering? Yes. Uh, joining using cluster? Nope. Okay, uh, so the password authentication, no. Local storage pool, sure. Um, so let's just do local with ZFS, that's fine. Okay, sure. Configure remote storage pool. Okay, so let's try that. Yes, use Ceph, new Ceph pool. Uh, Ceph cluster is Ceph and PolyTXD is fine. And the rest will just pick the defaults and go through LexD configuration. So that should initialize the initial LexD uh, server and connect it to our Ceph. So that worked out. Now let's add the other two by doing just uh, add demo02 and demo03. So we've got tokens and then run LexD init on both of those. Copying the first token, so clustering, you join existing cluster, yes, token, okay, uh, okay, okay, there we go, and then demo 03, same deal, give it a few seconds, and there we go. So now, again, let's look just from the first machine. LexD is clustered. We've got three machines in there. And we've got storage available on both locally using ZFS and remote using Ceph. Then let's create a container called U1 and put it on local storage. So it's just unloading the image and packing that onto the local ZFS and starting it, there we go. And then to U2, um, this is also local storage, but it's gonna pick the next server. So just to see that the cluster is working properly. So we should have two instances running, demo 01, demo 02, it's nice. And then let's do 03. Um, okay, storage and do remote. So that's gonna cause the third server, so demo 03, to then unpack the image onto a new Ceph uh, volume and then create an instance from there. It takes a little while longer usually with Ceph. There we go. And then if we wanted, we can we could go and do another one. So do U4 also on Ceph, and this time we won't see any kind of transfer or unpack or anything because Ceph already has the storage, so it goes pretty quick. And here we go. Now we have four instances running across all three servers, some on local storage, some on Ceph. And yeah, if we go look, I guess get the shell on U4. 
you can see dev rbd0 so it's in this on the indeed on the ceph rados block device and similarly if we go look at ceph directly so ceph status we're gonna see that we now have some usage on it um and if we look at the osd pools we can see that there's a dexd pool that's there and we can look at the usage and see that this pool is currently uh, the one uh, storing some some data on set and that's really it uh, that's pretty much as easy as it gets these days um, with um, when using microsoft with flexd the two snaps are really designed to kind of work together you don't have to use them together you can totally use microsoft just as a way to set up a self cluster um, but when you use Microsoft and you use the LexD snap, LexD automatically detects Microsoft and connects to it uh, so that you don't need to, to really do anything around uh, setting up key rings or configurations or anything. You just tell LexD create me a new storage pool on Ceph and it just does it through Microsoft. So that's that's really it for, for Microsoft and LexD. Uh, we've got something even more exciting around automating assembling those kind of clusters uh, which will come in probably around a month month's time which builds on top of both LexD and Microsoft to, to really get you an even simpler experience for setting up a cluster whether it's at home at work or like for an edge site or something like that uh, really makes it very very simple to get something up and running all right, um, so if you've got any questions, leave them down below, or you can go and ask them on the community forum. As you can see here, uh, there is a post uh, called Introducing Microsoft that has uh, some pointers on the snap commands and just introducing the snap in general at that point. So you can definitely go and ask your questions there. That's a, that's a great place to do it. But YouTube comments are also, also fine. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.